How do we know if the design is good? Does it have to be good looking, bright or trendy? What if I told you there is an objective method of evaluating design? Hi, I'm Ilya, the founder of Elekin, a UI UX design agency for SaaS. In this video, I'll tell you how to conduct UX audit. We'll start with a well-known set of principles called usability heuristics. It was invented by Jacob Nielsen, a very famous guy in the world of UX, also known as the guru of web page usability, according to New York Times. These 10 heuristics are like 10 commandments for designers. Well, not as amendment at commandments, they don't tell you exactly what to do, but they give you a good starting point to work from. You can use them as a general design rules, but we at Elekin believe they can help build a perfect checklist for UX audit. Let's explore usability heuristics one by one and figure out what questions we can extract from them for our checklist. In the end of the video, you'll get a complete downloadable checklist for UX audit, so stay tuned. So let's go. First of all, visibility of system status. Does the system provide a clear and timely feedback to users about what is happening? Are users able to easily understand the current state of the system? Users should always be able to tell what the app is doing and what state it's in. Progress bar, toast notification, or a simple thank you message, it all counts as feedback. Heuristic number two, match between system and the real world. Does the system use language and concepts familiar to the users? Does the system present information in a logical and intuitive way? Avoid using abbreviations, internal jargon, or professional terminology. But what if you think you really need those specific terms? Then use tooltips at least. Heuristic number three, user control, freedom, and error prevention. Can users easily undo actions and return to the previous state? Does the system provide a clear and easy to use navigation options? There must be always a return, undo, and cancel buttons. We all make mistakes, both designers and users. But unlike most mistakes that we do in life, the mistakes in the app can be reversible. One of the best examples is the undo button in Gmail. Imagine how many awkward moments it saved. And here is another one from Alekin Designs. This is Hapstash, an app with long sign-up process. Naturally, some people get tired and leave in the middle, but we don't want to lose them. So we added save and exit pop-up. Users can leave anytime and come back when they have time. Our next heuristic is consistency and standards. Does the system use consistent terminology, design patterns, and layout throughout? Does the system follow established design conventions and the best practices? Design patterns must be used where possible. What are the design patterns? You can see them everywhere. Most websites put menu in the top of the page because people are used to see that menu there. Most apps use double tap to give a like because that's what users learn from Instagram and now do it automatically. The design must be consistent within the product or a group of products. The logic is the same. People get used to a certain look and structure. Try to use it in every part of the product. Good UI UX design has to be consistent. This is why big companies like Google or MailChimp create their design systems. Let's move to error management. Does the system prevent errors through validation and other safeguards? Does the system guide users through the process of resolving errors? Does the system provide clear and helpful error messages? Error messages often bring frustration, but good design can make them useful. Think how this is different from this. How to make a good error page? Clearly explain what happened, suggest what users can do about it. Add a visual that brings attention to the error. Here is an example from TenderX, a tender management app that we designed. It has an image, an explanation to the error and the link to fix the error. Next heuristic, recognition rather than recall. Does the system provide clear and easily accessible information to help users complete the tasks? Does the system minimize the need for users to remember information from previous steps? Which question is easier to answer? Is the Antarctic blue whale is the biggest animal on the planet? Or what is the biggest animal on the planet? I bet you choose the first option, right? This is because the first question is about recognition and the second one is about recalling. Recognition is easier and that's what we want to use in UX design. Here's how it looks in the Zoom menu. Each option has an icon and a clue. It helps users to orientate faster. Next point, flexibility and efficiency of use. Does the system provide shortcut and other tools to help users complete tasks more quickly? Can experienced users customize the system to their preferences? Interaction must be adjusted for beginners and advanced users. Newbies can easily get confused by a complicated interface. And advanced users need efficient tools, which are not always intuitive and minimalist. For example, Photoshop. The interface is not easy or or intuitive at all. If you're a newbie, you can choose one of the preset toolbars for beginners, photo editing, and so on. And if you're an advanced user, you can customize Photoshop to your needs or simply use shortcuts to switch between the tools. Authentic and minimalist design. Does the system use a clean and uncluttered design? Does the system use appropriate typography, color, and imagery? When there are too many elements on the screen, users get lost. I know it can be tough to read off some elements, but if you keep all of them, it will be hard to find the most important ones. Check out 
about one of our redesigns we did to a Cloud Phone system app. Decluttering helped to improve user experience a lot. And the last one, help and documentation. Does the system provide clear and comprehensive help documentation? Is help documentation easy to find and use? Users don't have to travel 10 pages to find the help contact. As I've mentioned earlier, people make mistakes and sometimes they get lost even the most intuitive interface. Getting lost is frustrating, but you know what is even more frustrating? Not being able to get help. Here's an example. Canva. Visible question mark button. Search frequently used topics. That's it. 10 heuristics from Jacob Nielsen that make great usability. Now that we know the rules, let's talk about how to use them. First, get a checklist that includes all usability tips you need to follow. Then, have an evaluator or a few take a look at your product's interface and see how well it follows those tips. As you review in the app, take notes and screenshots of any areas where you find problems or things that could be improved. Don't worry if you find a lot of issues. Every problem you find is a chance to make your product better. Once you've finished evaluating the app, organize all of your findings into a UX audit report. This report will help you to see all the areas where your product needs improvement and give you a roadmap for making it more user-friendly and accessible. To get the best results, find someone outside of your product to do the audit. That way, you'll get the fresh look and won't be biased. When we start with a redesign for a new client, we often go with the UX audit first. That's a great starting point for design improvements. Here's one page of a UX audit we did for our client enrolling, a student engagement app. The product had some issues with their app's visuals and usability. Before we started to work on fixing it, we analyzed the app to find out exactly what was not working. We used Jacob Nielsen's 10 usability heuristics to help us with it. We put ourselves into enrolling user's shoes and headed straight to the filtering feature. The first thing we noticed was the empty thumb navigation menu that makes users disoriented, not knowing what is going on. Seems like this is the first point in our checklist. Additionally, it was completely unclear how to activate the filter. The solution was to put the proper markers and add a separate button to enable filtering feature. UX audit is what you should do before you decide changing anything in your product to improve user experience. It helps to make informed decisions rather than doing a redesign for the sake of redesign. So if you are on this path, you can download the checklist, find the link in the description below. If this video was useful, hit the like button and subscribe. See you soon.